I do want to give a few little channel updates so first of all it is the week of Thanksgiving so I might be busy this week so if you see the video after this one and I'm wearing the exact same outfit just know that I put in overtime for you guys and I made another video right after this one so I actually made a video <laughs> I'm going to be doing vlogmas this year last year was probably the most difficult vlogmas that I've ever done and if you don't know the story I'm not gonna get too into it you can go watch those really badly put together vlogs uh, last year my dog died <laughs> and so um, around Christmas and I had a really hard time and I basically tried to work instead of grieving and so it was really hard and those videos are really crappy so this year I am going to try I, like how I said this last year before I knew my dog was sick I was like vlogmas is going to be so good this year 2021 I'm gonna do this and then my dog dies so um <laughs> 2022 we are going to have a hopefully good vlogmas this year so vlogmas is coming in just like maybe a week i am going to have a very very busy at least first week of december because if you don't know my idol group lumerous we are going to do a live show our first live event the day after my birthday so my birthday happens on the second and then we are going to con so i'm gonna be very busy so if the vlogs are a little iffy for a little while i'm sorry I am working on it. <laughs> but without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. I'm sure you guys are wondering why is there a crown and some books here? Well, today <laughs> I want to go over one of my favorite book series because I realized I have shown these books to you guys on my Instagram, on YouTube, but I have never actually give my own opinion about them and I've never like had an actual review for them. Like me, never have I ever talked about these books. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about these books because these are probably one of my favorite book series in the world, which is the Rosewood Chronicle series by Connie Glynn. I do have all five books. I am absolutely insane. I love these books. And so it's been, <sighs> gosh, maybe six years since I've been reading and collecting these books. I think that sounds right. I remember buying this book for my birthday when I was 14. I am almost 20 now. I will be 20 in a month. And I bought this on my birthday when I was 14. So it's probably been about six years, but oh my goodness, I wanted to go over my opinions and my thoughts for all of these books. I might not remember every single detail, but that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video because I do want to go back and reread the series. Cause like I said, this is one of those series that like got me invigorated to read. Like every time a new book came out, I rushed to Amazon. Yes, I bought it on my Amazon. Shh. I rushed to the cart and I checked these out. These were so good. There are some things in them that, you know, obviously as a writer myself, I would also kind of want to change just a little bit. I think it would make it more interesting to have a little bit more plot in this scene instead of this scene, stuff like that, minor, minor details. But overall, I love these books and I want to share them with you guys. And if you haven't read these books, please go read them. They are so good. You will love them, hopefully. If you like princesses, magic, swords, Japan, you're probably gonna love these. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my review, my opinion of the Rosewood Chronicle series. So this is the first book. This is Princess Undercover. This is the cover. <laughs> it is very, very beautiful. First of all, I need to glow for a second because out of all the books that I have seen, like these books really do stand out. Like you walk by these in Barnes and Noble, it just catches your eye. Like, I am someone who, if I see a pretty girl with a crown on, with starry galaxy stuff in the background, I'm gonna pick it up. I might not read it, but I'm at least gonna pick it up. So first of all, I have to give a 10 out of 10 on the graphic designs of these books. They are absolutely beautiful. I love the pastels, but we're not here to talk about the covers. We're here to talk about the books. So once again, this is going to be a kind of a big spoiler video. I'm gonna try not to spoil as much, but like I said, these books have been out for like a couple years. Like they've been finished for a couple years now. So like, 
Is it really my fault? Am I really spoiling these? You should have read it when it came out. <laughs> Not everyone can be a dedicated fan like I can. So what is the story of the Rosewood Hall? So basically you have the main character, I'll call her the main character, even though it kind of has like three main characters. I'm gonna say the main character is Lottie Pumpkin, AKA Charlotte Pumpkin, is a very shy, kind of outgoing, petite, very bubbly, happy girl, kind of like a Goldilocks girl, has the long curly hair. She is like raised by her <laughs> quote unquote evil stepmother, which I do want to say some of this stuff is kind of cliche, but it is kind of based around like princess and her whole character is about fairy tales. She loves fairy tales. Fairy tales are something that gets referenced throughout this entire series. And so her character is a little cliche, but she's like one of those like happy bubbly, like I'm going to be the best princess I can be character until the end of the series, which doesn't necessarily change, but we'll get into that later on. So Lottie is living with her evil stepmother while her father is away. And so I'm missing some details because it's been a couple of years, but she gets accepted into like one of the most prestigious, beautiful schools in the, I think country. I, I'm sure this is based in Britain because Connie is from Britain. And so anyway, she gets accepted and she goes to her dream school. She leaves her best friend, Ollie. I, I think his name was Ollie, <laughs> leaves him behind and goes away from her evil stepmom, away from all her trauma and like issues in that house and moves to this new school where she dorms in. And so when she's there, she meets this amazing, beautiful, punk rock, kind of punk rock, <laughs> rocker chick named Ellie Wolf, Eleanor Wolf. And so they kind of start out like, they're not immediately best friends. They get put into the same room, dorm room, with each other. And so Lottie is kind of, I kind of have like a mixture of them going on today. Like Lottie is very like pink, pastel, roses, cutesy, Disney, you know, pretty and pink kind of girl. And Ellie is very much dark rock bands, rock shirts, girl. <laughs> Lottie is also introduced to one of Eleanor's friends, Jamie Volk, who we later in the series learn that Ellie, Eleanor, is the princess of the kingdom Maradova. I hope I'm saying that right, probably not, but she is the princess and Jamie is like, we'll call her her bodyguard, technical word that is used in the book series as partisan, but anyway, she finds out that these two people are basically like royalty and she's like, oh my goodness that's so cool and ellie's like um <laughs> no it is not i hate being a princess i am not the kind of princess that my parents want me to be i am not pretty and proper and pink i want to go play a guitar <laughs> and so they have this grand scheme to switch a switcheroo cliches of course and say that lottie is the princess because she fits the you know golden hair pretty and pink wears dresses elegant friendly princess that Ellie was supposed to be, but Ellie does not want to be a princess. She just wants to live her life at this new school. She wants to be able to experience life because she's been kept in a castle for so long and she just wants to go out there and be herself and find herself. And so they have this grand scheme, they switch a room. That's why it's called Undercover Princess. Wow, who would have guessed? The series is kind of about like minor things that are happening and about them switching. And you have a little bit of like romances here and there. But this book is where I personally think all the mysteries start coming into play. So the second book in the series is called Princess and Practice. Once again, very beautiful cover. This is supposed to be Lottie on the front. As you can see, she's got the pretty hair, pretty dress, her signature crown. So anyway, this book has a lot more into the school history. So one of the big things about this book series is a lot of weird things are happening at the school Rosewood Hall. This is once again, a very prestigious, beautiful school and you know it's one of the best ones in the country and so it's been around for a while and somehow 
Lottie just feels drawn to the school. She has never stepped foot in the school before, but she feels like she belongs. Like there's something that she's longing for here, but she can't quite figure it out. So this basically, this is a spoiler by the way, basically this whole book is about them finding out that Lottie is actually an ancestor of the school founder, William Tuffy, I think his name was, William Tuffy, who was actually the long lost princess, Liliana. So technically, Lottie, who has always wanted to be a princess, is from royalty but Liliana did not want to be a princess just like Ellie she wanted to be herself and be able to pursue passions that she wanted and so that is why she disguised herself as a man founded this school and basically like you know created this entire like lineage that Lottie had no idea about and also at the end of this book there is a little bit more of a plot device happening. There's a bigger evil growing that we see under this group called Leviathan. So, who is Leviathan? Basically, they are the big bad of the entire series and they have been tricking people, poisoning people into like a mind control kind of serum. So basically, they've been working with one of the side kind of characters in the story, Thompson, I believe their name is Thompson, the twins. And so their father unknowingly like, works with Leviathan and accidentally causes a big chain of bad to happen. <laughs> so basically, they Leviathan uses him and they create brainwash people into doing whatever Leviathan wants them to do. And basically, we learn throughout the book series, <laughs> we go to this one, the next one, which is the Lost Princess. We find out more about the Hamelin formula and we find out why and how they're using it. This is the whole one about Japan. They go, they go to like a transfer school over in Japan and they find out some stuff about the founder of that school and the founder of Rosewood find out they're connected. Lottie gets a sword. <laughs> cool. The series takes a turn, number three out of five, kind of good place in the middle where it takes a turn from being kind of like, you know, still like soft and mysterious and happy to trauma. Like there is so much trauma involved in this. There is like going from like happy, like, you know, beginning of the anime where building up stamina, I'm going to be the best like double princess they've ever seen into trauma. Everyone is traumatized. Affected by the Hemelin formula are like absolutely traumatized. Like the things that they have went through, the abuse they have seen, it is all in this book. Like you really see some of the horrors this book and towards the end of this book as well, where you just see how horrific these people have been treated under Leviathan. In this book where we get kind of introduced to a new side character who we don't really know who is big and bad or not, which is Haru, he is from Japan. He comes back to Britain. I'm presuming that's where Rosalind Hall is once again goes back and basically watches over them in this next book. So basically, this is the fourth book. This is Princess at Heart. Once again, very beautiful covers. And so in this one um, is where it kind of takes a turn. Everybody is starting to get a little bit angsty with each other. Lottie and Ellie, who has had like a perfect almost relationship, starts like absolutely like hating each other. Ellie at this time starts feeling like she's putting in Lottie so much danger by having her as her stunt double and that she can't do anything right. And I think this is a really good like plot device for Eleanor who is like, you know, the princess and like just kind of wants to do whatever she wanted to do. Never really put anyone's thoughts above herself until she met Lottie and Lottie really did change her. And so she starts to like, you know, feel bad for Lottie because she's like, she's getting stabbed, she's getting sick, she's like failing at grades and she's having so many like meltdowns because of all the stress and pressure she's under from trying to one, stop Leviathan, two, figure out the whole deal with her school, be a princess, be in the media, have the media shame her, even though it's not necessarily her that she's the princess, they, know, they don't really know she's a princess, but she's feeling it, so you know. She gets the backlash from the media and like school, all of that is on her shoulders and Lottie's just like smiling through the pain, she's like, I can't let anybody know how hard this is because I chose this, I can do this, if anyone can do this, it's me. Ellie is like 
100% like really taking that to heart. She feels like this is all her fault. And so in this one, we really see them start to grow apart. And by the end of the book, Leviathan like comes into the scene, does some bad stuff and basically tears their relationship in two. The book where Ellie kind of just like runs away from Lottie, Jamie and all of her friends, goes back to Marandova and just absolutely tries to take all of the blame and all of the like spotlight off of Lottie so that she can have a normal last year. I think she's a senior at this point. I can have a s nice, simple, fun year at school. And so she goes back home and she's like, guess what everybody? I'm the real princess. Stop being mean to this girl. And so that is where that book leaves off. And we come to the last one, which is Princess Ever After. And this is probably one of my most favorite covers that I have ever seen on any book series. And it's just absolutely beautiful. Like the detail in the artwork, it's just gorgeous. So anyway, in this book, it is the last one. This is the fifth one of the series. And obviously things are going to be resolved. But once again, there's a lot of trauma in the front part of the book. And so basically the whole point of this is they are taking down Leviathan. They are planning. They are taking them down for good. They are saving Ellie because they all know, her friends know that this is not what Ellie wants. Ellie does not want to be a princess. She does not want to be in charge of everything. And so in this book, a lot more happens than just Ellie. We find out that Jamie is actually like her cousin, cousin. Jamie is her cousin. And the big bad of Leviathan is actually Ellie's uncle, Alexander. And so I think his name is Alexander, right? <laughs> No, it's not. It's Claude. Sorry. Evil guys' names are usually named Claude, like in Black Butler. <laughs> and so we find out that Jamie is actually royalty as well, and that causes a very big drift between Ellie and Jamie, because Jamie was always, like, conditioned by her family, the king, the queen, the queen mother, as to be her bodyguard. Not because they were ashamed, we find out, but that's what he thinks, but because they wanted to protect him and they didn't necessarily want like their secret to come out because fun fact Claude actually had uh, Jamie's mother murdered we love big bad guys anyway finds out that they are technically related and they are also both royalty Jamie understands that nothing about his life is what he thought it was in like two seconds and so this whole book is also about Jamie healing and trying to like find a side like his father is obviously trying to like get him to come to his side he's being very gentle and kind and caring to him and obviously Jamie knows that something is up it's not correct the way that he's acting towards him and so Jamie basically has to choose between what he wants and what his father wants and he does defy his father in the end we get to save Ellie and relationships are paired up and I'm not going to spoil the ending because the ending is very beautiful and you guys should go see it I love time skips this is an amazing book series go read it basically that is the synopsis if you liked anything of that go ahead check it out I glossed over a lot because I do want everyone to read this book series because it's one of my favorites so yeah Let's get into my opinion time now. <laughs> so let's start with the first book. I need to put out there very quickly and clearly how good the first book was. This might just be a my opinion thing and this might just be the first book, first movie syndrome where you know you watch like a movie, like for example, you watch Harry Potter for the first time and you're so engrossed in it or like you watch something like Shrek for the first time and like, you know, you wonder is the sequel going to be just as good as the first one? Is the second movie gonna be as good as the second one? It's a hit or miss thing. You know, it could either be really good or really bad. So my opinion is that the first book is better than them all. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Just the way that I felt reading the first book was a feeling that I didn't get reading any of these other like books in the series and I think it's because it did get more into trauma and obviously these characters are teenagers, they're growing up, they are literally fighting for their lives and so of course there's going to be trauma but the first book series it is so hard for me to say that any of these book series say that any of these books are better than the first one. I tell you, when I read the first book, I remember the scene so clearly because I remember this is the first time I read a book 
that I could not stop putting it down. Like I was in my first year of high school and I was in my honors English class because I couldn't take AP English until like I was a sophomore, no, junior. <laughs> and so high school, ha, I forgot how that works. And so anyway, I was in my AP class and we always did like reading time because God bless English classes. They give you time to read. <laughs> I love that, that's my favorite part. I just remember sitting there at my desk, the lights were dimmed down, we had soft music in the background, and I just remember the imagery was something that I had never experienced in a book before, and it was so magical. Like, the scene of the roses, like you could smell the roses, you could smell the air, the, like it was just so beautiful. And I just remember sitting there like almost crying, because I was like, I wanna go to this school, please. Take me away from my high school. Let me be in a boarding school place with roses and tea time, please. Like, I cannot, express to you guys how magical reading that for the first time felt. It is probably, like I said, one of the most magical scenes that I have ever read in a book where I have been absolutely swept away to another school. Like I was not me. I was Lottie Pumpkin. I was going to school. I was wearing a tiara. I was eating crumpets and I was in like my purple like uniform. And that's another thing that I really love about this book series is they kind of have like, like I don't want to say Harry Potter houses because obviously like more British schools do have houses. It's not just like a Harry Potter thing, but they do have three houses. They have conch stratus. I forgot the last one. <laughs> anyway, I was a conch student. I was the yellow one. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I would be yellow. I don't really know what yellow means, but that's what I was. I took the quiz. <laughs> I think the scenery in probably the first book and probably the third book when they go to Japan probably my second favorite of the imagery. I love the imagery throughout these, but like, just like going to Rosewood the first time and then mixed with Japan. I love Japan and I know Connie has been to Japan before. If you don't know who Connie is, by the way, she used to be Nutarella. Um, if you can tell, I took a lot of inspiration. Ye olden time from watching her videos, but I love Japan and I know she's been to Japan. Imagery wise, that is my opinion. My second opinion that I want to talk about is the characters. I genuinely think that this has, this series probably has one of my favorite cast of characters. Like, I don't feel like anyone is kind of shoved off to the side. Like, everyone is important. Everyone has a role that they play, and I think that is super important when you take a story and you have a bunch of characters who are, even if they are side characters, you have them in there and they're a big focus of the team and then they just get shoved to the side. I hate that in stories. I love when people are constantly coming in, constantly helping the main character, and they have an active role to play. Personally, I can't, I don't know if I'm saying her name right, because I said it Bina, and then someone told me that it was Biana. I don't know, but I love her. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that here. I love her character. I love the fact that she is so smart, but she's one of those smart people who like, they're smart, but they still understand human emotions. Does that make sense? You know, like some people are just so like intelligent that they have more of a hard time like understanding when someone is upset. And I'm gonna say Bina, cause that's what I always read her name as is Bina, but she was just so caring for Lottie and she was always there. She was such a good friend for her and I really do love smart girls. And so anyway, my favorite character was her, probably followed by Anastasia and uh, I forgot her girlfriend's name. So it's with an S. Anyway, she was the big bad for a while and then she turned good again. She got brainwashed. <laughs> I genuinely feel like the characters are not overshadowed. Like everybody has a role and I appreciate that so much. Like, can I just talk about Percy Jackson for a second? There are so many characters in Percy Jackson and like, even in Harry Potter, there are so many side characters in Harry Potter and Percy Jackson that are there, but they're not important enough. You know, they're cut out of scenes and like, you know, they don't know the plans. They're just kind of there for when you need someone. Like they're always just show up. Whenever the main character needs them, they show up. But I like how Connie's wrote her books to where the characters are constantly there and they're constantly interacting. So it's never like this cliche, oh, you need someone to go spy on someone for you? I'm right here. I just walked into the room. Like, no, 
These are friends. They have tea parties together. It's so cool, this book, because if you don't know, I watch a lot of ghost shows. I like ghost shows. I like paranormal stuff. I'm interested in it. Do I necessarily believe in it? No, but I do like that kind of stuff. And so when Bina said, let's have a seance, I was like, heck yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it was so random, but it worked really well with the plot, you know? It was so random, but it was like something that I was like, this is good. Like, I did not expect this to work as well with the plot. I don't want to spoil what happens in the seance, but I didn't expect for it to work as well. And I really like the way that Connie writes stuff. I like the way that they like, you know, they can have something kind of crazy like a seance come up in a book about like princesses, roses, and then like add trauma and add like abuse and like, healing and friendship all together all these like conflicting very big things very big story plots they all come together so nicely and i think that's one of the best things about this series is how well written it is i personally do feel like it was a little bit rushed especially in the last few books like i definitely feel like this one the last one was rushed towards the end i felt like there was okay i don't want to spoil the whole thing but there was a book there was a fight scene at the end of the book, and I feel like the fight scene was a little too rushed for me. Like, was, I grew up watching Naruto, so like, I know all about scenes that last, like fight scenes that last like at least 12 episodes. And so I, I feel like I was expecting a little bit more, especially from some of like the more action-y scenes toward the end. Like, I do feel like some of them were a little bit more rushed, and I do feel like, I really like the ending of this one, but I do feel like it was rushed and I wanted a little bit more, like maybe a little bit more into their future. I wanted to know like how everything kind of got resolved and it kind of just went from like, okay, we defeated the big bad, so like everything's good. And then it just time skips to the future and tells you what happens in the future. And personally, I don't like that in a story. I like to see a little bit more of resolvement happening before you time skip. Like I like to see people like actively like in the present working to like rebuild things that have been lost you know i like to see things getting done by the people who like saved the world basically and i feel like it kind of just got like jump cut to the future and i would have liked a little bit more and i i think i would have liked a little bit more to know about their future i know it wraps it up really nicely but i wanted a little bit more about their future i wanted to know about their kids their jobs you know i wanted a little bit more so when i did finish the series I did feel a little bit empty because I wanted more and I didn't get that much more so that's like the one thing that I have to say about this so I still really enjoyed the book series and I am going to reread that that is why I am making this series in the first place because I am going to reread these books because I do that ever so often I will go and I will reread some of my favorite book series just so that like you know I can remember some of the stuff that happens because I like to reread books I am a bookaholic I'm a book collector I love books and I don't collect books just to put on my shelf like here's my manga shelf that you can only have see I do not collect books so that they will just sit there and become dusty and crusty over the years and I do not use them for vanity and for show I reread them you guys don't see it but I reread these mangas a lot when I'm sad <laughs> and so that's the same thing with books you know I love books I love being swept away into stories and so I like to reread my books but with that being said I'm going to wrap that up on my reviews I would probably give this series I would say like a 9 out of 10 just because I do feel like the entire book series is really good until you get to this one and I do which is the third one and I feel like the fourth and the fifth have a bit too much of a rush to them I feel like I was just constantly like going and going and going and I didn't have a break which obviously it makes sense because it you know usually the last couple of books or movies in series are like very action-packed and are usually a little bit more darker than the first ones because you know the series is wrapping up the big bad is winning and like everything feels hopeless it's a good thing 
but I did feel like I wanted a little bit more. I wanted more friendship time and I mean I did like it and I liked how the trauma was built and I liked how a lot of the trauma got resolved. I do feel like there were some people who I would have liked to see, you know, them go to therapy, <laughs> but like overall I love this book series. I cannot wait for more books that Connie writes because I know I think this might just be me talking out of my butt, but I did remember hearing Connie at some point say that she was writing some kind of like more horror mystery and I also love stuff like that. I love basically any book series and so very interested if that ever does come to fruition or not. I don't remember where I see that. Don't quote me on that by the way. I just feel like I remember seeing it. But anyway, that is all for this video. If you guys have read the book series, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Let me know who's your favorite character, what house you're in, were you a fan of Nutarella at the time? Because I was. Talk to me in the comments. I love talking to you guys. So yeah, please remember to like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Go check out Connie's social medias. Go check out Snaggletooth, because Snaggletooth is her band, by the way. And absolutely, it slaps. The music is beautiful. I love their voices. Go check them out. They're great. So yeah, that is all for this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Thank you.